Former GIC investment chief Ng Tok Song makes his bid for Singapore's presidency. He says he's offering a choice that's independent of any political party, setting the stage for a three-cornered fight. Well, Mr Ng's bid comes after former senior minister Taman Shanmugaratnam and businessman George Goh announced their intentions to run for president. For more, we're joined by Dr Jillian Koh. She's the deputy director of research at the Institute of Policy Studies at NUS. Dr Koh, thanks very much for joining us. Nice to see you. Likewise. I think the question now that people are wondering, uh, and we can see from the little uh, screen that we have behind you, mm -hmm. are we going to see a three-cornered fight at this election? Well, that's a very good question. And the process is such that prospective candidates have to put in an application for a certificate of eligibility. This is presented to the Presidential Elections Committee. Mm. And they have to, these prospective candidates, uh, indicate uh, the basis on which they are applying for eligibility. And as we know, in the Constitution, under Clauses 19, you can go on an automatic track because you qualify on the basis of public sector offices. Or you can go on an automatic track on the private sector one because you've run a company of a certain size and you prove that uh, you've had executive decision-making power and it was profitable. Mm. Um, in this case, there's also the deliberative track. So if you have experience akin to what are on the automatic tracks, you can put those in. So the three prospective candidates have to actually say how they feel they qualify how they are persons of integrity, and the six-member PEC will have to decide and see whether they agree or not and give out a certificate. It's only then that we will know how many candidates there actually will be uh, putting their uh, papers in uh, on nomination day. Uh, of course, let's not discount the possibility that might be others who uh, make a bid as well. Mm. All right, uh, Mr. Ng today mm -hmm. has taken his first step, picking up his forms. Indeed. And when questioned, he said he is go going forward, uh, proposing himself as an independent candidate with no links to the ruling party. Right. Of course, some might question that, saying that you are in charge of GIC, effectively Singapore's sovereign wealth fund, managing our foreign reserves. Mm -hmm. How can you not have links to the ruling party. I think now, this, yeah. uh, 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 just bear with me a moment. <laughs> all right, sure. Uh, for the th if all three should qualify and only these three qualify mm -hmm. and run, uh, would perceived, imagined or otherwise links to any party affect how the vote is split between these three men? I think first, it depends on what voters understand the role uh, to be. Of course, uh, Mr. Ng's referred to, uh, you know, the... Um, ceremonial role, and then there is the community role and the custodial role. And in the custodial role, there are very important, though minor, but I mean, small number, but very important roles of the president where he can veto uh, the use of the national reserves and certainly veto what the government puts forward for appointments to top uh, uh, posts in the public sector. So I think if voters feel that it's important to have somebody who is not associated with the government, with the establishment or the governing party in order to play that role effectively, then, you know, putting the candidates putting themselves forward as independent will certainly be something that will attract that group of voters. But, you know, uh, there is also the question of um, whether uh, you have the experience to, uh, you know, do all three roles, but especially that uh, special uh, um, executive role. And guess what? All three of them are associated with the establishment, surely, because George Goh has reminded us that he was an ambassador. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, Mr Ng has been part of a very important national institution. And of course, Mr Shan Mugaratnam is a household name, having been a political leader uh, for that many years and truly... Uh, you know, there have been so many uh, discussions and, talk, uh, the, um, you know, calls for him mm. to, um, you know, uh, be much more than that. Yeah, well, but while we're on this comparison of the three prospective candidates, yes. I just want to draw your attention to the timing of Mr. Ng's announcement of his potential candidacy. Sure. You know, it's been more than a month, I, think, I believe, since Mr. George Goh announced his intentions. Uh, Mr. Taman as well, slightly mm -hmm. before that. So in this 
you know, slightly more than a month, people have been getting to know, in, in, in Mr. Taman's case, perhaps not so much, mm -hmm. but people starting to get to know these two men. And today we have Mr. Ng coming on board, relatively, uh, uh, un relative unknown to mm -hmm. most people. Sure. How does that play into the state of affairs here? Yeah. I guess the more time that prospective candidates have to introduce themselves, get people familiar with them, the better. As we said, Mr. Taman Shamugaratnam is a household name anyway. Mm. Uh, George Goh has had some time to kind of uh, um, explain who he is, where he comes from, and Mr. Ng is now uh, catching up. But as we said, um, it really does not matter until these prospective candidates actually receive a certificate of eligibility and those who don't have the time will then want to really focus when that comes about. Mm. Right, uh, as you say, we're finding out a little bit more about each man, apart yes. from Mr. Thalman Shamagrup, with right. whom we're very familiar. So, uh, for Mr. Ng, uh, he is... We realise now that he's, he, has, he has a fiancé, and if he should qualify as a candidate, mm -hmm. this will be the first presidential candidate who will be going to the vote, running without a spouse. In the public eye, do you think it would appeal or not appeal as much that he does not have a spouse in hand, rather he has a fiancé, a civil law, would this affect his chances? Well, I think, um, you know, Mr Ng is a widower and has been for some time now. And uh, certainly the candidate, if he were to receive the COE, uh, would be entering the contest without a spouse. I think there's, a, of course, always a lot of public interest and curiosity about who the significant other is when it comes to prospective candidates. And uh, there would be similar, uh, I think, curiosity about Miss Sybil Lau. And that's why uh, there was some effort to make sure that she had something to say about herself and her support uh, for her fiancé. Mm. So it will, uh, of course, be a, a topic of much interest. But I think at the end of the day, most critical question is the candidate and people's assessment of the suitability of the candidate for the role, which means that there has to be much more understanding of the role as you talk about it and whether perhaps the president as the chief diplomat does it really matter if he has a significant other and who that significant other is, but only in that role? There's not very much more mm. that uh, you know, really feeds into the question, I believe at least. Mm. And on that note, of course, I'd like to remind our viewers that we have an exclusive interview with Ms Lau that's coming up a bit later in the programme. Dr Ko, for now, thank you very much for sharing your insight with us. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. Good speaking to you too. Thank that you. was uh, Dr Jillian Ko, Deputy Director of Research at the Institute of Policy Studies at NUS.